WSFA Channel 12, Montgomery. Live from Alabama's news source, this is WSFA News 12, the 6 o'clock report. With Bob Howell, weather with Rich Thomas, and with sports, Bill Snow. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Davis. In tonight for Bob Howell, this is the news for Tuesday, October 21st. A number of accused killers are off in the streets, thanks to the Montgomery Police Department. They put the wraps on six unsolved murders and one attempted murder dating back to 1993. Beth Jett joins us now from Loveless Curve in West Montgomery. Beth, I remember not too long ago where you're standing was the scene of a very grisly crime that had gone unsolved for almost a year. That's right, Barry. In this neighborhood, West Montgomery on Loveless Curve, this was the scene of a double homicide and attempted murder, a very grisly scene that was unsolved for quite some time. Well, now it's solved. In fact, it's one of six cases that Montgomery police have cleared over the last couple of months. Now, take a look at video from the crime scene when it happened here on Loveless Curve about a year ago. The incident happened over Thanksgiving holiday in 1996. Timothy Earl Ray and John Bradley were shot to death. A third person, Eugene Smith, was also shot but survived. Well, today, police announced the arrest of Melvin Davis and Derek Singleton. Both have been charged with two counts of capital murder, one count of attempted murder, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Police say the two were trying to kill someone they thought was an informant, but that person wasn't there. Police also arrested Jimmy Joe Williams, Jr. and charged him with capital murder for killing Yates Larry Sustar in 1996. Sustar was robbed and then fatally shot at his home. Now, officers arrested a total of nine suspects over the last two months. They've been working very closely with the Montgomery County District Attorney's Office to crack these cases. However, they're not out of the clear yet. Of 23 murders in Montgomery in 1997, five of them remain unsolved. So police have six down and several more to go. Barry? Seth, I don't recall police ever doing this, uh, making this many arrests, but holding them and announcing them all at once. Did they give you any reason why they did it this way? Yes, Barry, they did. They said that they made several arrests a, a few months ago, and they made three arrests just over the last few days. So basically, they recapped all of those cases for us. As far as how they did it, well, informants helped them, as well as people who also had other charges pending against them, and they just wanted to cooperate with police. They helped a lot. Officers got several confessions out of their suspects, and robbery was the motive in most of these cases. Barry? All right. Thanks, Beth. A truck driver traveling on I-85 managed to escape injury when he lost control of his rig this afternoon. The accident snarled lunch hour traffic for a little while. Police say the driver was going too fast and lost control in the curb. The truck was hauling 22,000 pounds of plastic containers. Firefighters quickly cleaned up a small diesel fuel and oil spill and got traffic moving swiftly. Meanwhile, on the south side of town, a collision between a motorhome and a car sends at least one person to the hospital. The wreck happened around 3.45 this afternoon on Highway 231 in front of Merle's truck stop. Both the motorhome and the Chevy Nova were heavily damaged. There's no word on what caused the accident or how serious the victim's injuries are. State troopers haven't released the victim's name. A 45-year-old Montgomery man is facing charges after a confrontation with police this morning. Russell Huggins was taken into custody after reportedly charging officers with an axe handle. It happened at the Waffle House on Shirley Lane and East Boulevard. Police say Huggins approached a motorist at a red light and threatened the man with the axe handle. The motorist called police, and when they arrived, Huggins charged the officers. The police say they had to mace Huggins to subdue him. Charges are pending. Well, if you have relatives in parts of East Alabama, you may have to pull out the telephone book the next time you want to call them. They could be getting a new area code. Starting next September, several cities, including Alex City, Wadawi, and Sylacauga, will start using area code 256. Other cities using that code are Huntsville, Decatur, Florence, Coleman, and Talladega. Beginning March 23rd, callers may use either 256 or the current 205 to make calls to those numbers covered by the area code. But on September 28th next year, only the new code will work. The State Ethics Board was busy today. We'll tell you about a couple of their decisions a little later. And most businessmen know a lot can be done on the golf course. Local business leaders were using a grand opportunity today. We'll have that story coming up. Closed captioning of WSFA News is brought to you by Ziegler Luncheon Meats. For over 70 years, Ziegler, a tradition of great taste. 
You're watching WSFA News 12, Alabama's news source. State Senator Hank Sanders has been cleared in an ethics probe filed by a longtime foe. The commission ruled 4-0 to zero today on a complaint brought by Selma Mayor Joe Smitherman. Smitherman questioned Sanders' ethics because of tax money sent to nonprofit organizations incorporated by Sanders' wife. The Selma Mayor says most of the money was channeled after Sanders became a powerful Senate committee chairman. Smitherman told us this afternoon that he got a fair hearing but believes it's now up to Attorney General Bill Pryor to investigate further. He says he's already given prior documents. Now, the Attorney General's name also came up in today's Ethics Committee meeting. The Ethics Panel ruled unanimously that the AG cannot travel to political functions in his state security officer's car. In that unanimous decision, the Commission says the ruling applies to all public officials. Pryor says he wanted to make sure the rules on state vehicles heading into the campaign season. I have regularly traveled with um, my security to um, events as Attorney General. Uh, generally, I have really refrain from doing it um, for any time when I'm, I'm going to a fundraiser. But um, I have always been told that I could ride with my security anywhere I wanted um, because they're required by law to give me security. But I wanted to make extra sure, and that's why I asked the Ethics Commission for an opinion. Now, the Commission says that Pryor must make other travel arrangements if he's going to a political event after making an appearance as Attorney General. The number of political action committees registered in Alabama is going up. 24 new PACs have registered with state election officials since the beginning of this year, bringing the total to a record 362. That's a jump of more than 120 new PACs since 1991. Still to come tonight, how low will it go? The temperature, that is. Rich Thomas has his forecast coming up. And the Auburn Tigers are trying to put the Gators out of their minds so they can concentrate on the Hogs. Bill Snow has the Sports Menagerie coming up. Phil, so I was telling you, I had an opportunity to go to the Auburn, Florida game the other day, and my wife's a Gator, and her brother, who came up, gave us the tickets also a Gator. I was sitting in the midst of Gator country, and it, it was hard not to root for Auburn <laughs> because I was afraid I would be mugged in the middle of it, but uh, I was truly saddened by the fact that they lost. It was a great day for college football, or just to be on campus for a major college That's game. something else, isn't it? Really exciting. We have a trivia question for you uh, tonight. Name the only two teams in the SEC West that control their own destiny. That's to say, who can win the rest of their games and without any help from anyone else, go on to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. It's Auburn and their Saturday opponent, Arkansas. Yes, it could happen. If Arkansas beats Auburn and wins the rest of their conference games, they go to Atlanta. A tall order for the Razorbacks, yes, but remember they did it in 1995 after beating Alabama and Auburn. I'm just nervous enough to, to focus 100% on every single game and hope everybody in our division loses because we can't, somebody could knock us off. So Bowden and the Tigers can ill afford any lingering what might have been thoughts about the Florida game. You can, I mean, you can count the teams every single year of the 115 or 21 A teams that start out with the goal of winning them all or you'll count the teams on one hand that end up undefeated at the end of the season maybe three fingers there'll be what two or three undefeated teams in all of america and so what makes the other teams have a chance to win it's how they responded to that loss and so that's 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 our what we have to do right now we have to respond to that loss uh and if we respond and improve then we have all the opportunities that are out there. All, all kinds of wonderful things are out there for us. After seven straight games, the last a very difficult one against Florida, Bowden gave the Tigers a day off the practice field yesterday, spending their allotted time studying Arkansas. I've been to the line watching film for about two hours. Then we went to a scouting report. You know, it was just a day to get our legs back on this and get our minds right. And I think we did that. You didn't go quail hunting on your off day, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't go quail hunting. <laughs> I just relaxed. Um, it was it kind of surprising that we got a day off, but I really enjoyed it. Gave me time to um, keep my mind back together, get my thoughts together, and just keep my mind um, back on football. So um, we've been going since August, and we needed a break. Auburn will be on television for the eighth straight time this week. The game will be televised on ESPN2, kickoff shortly after 5 o'clock Saturday from Razorback Stadium on the campus of the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Looks like another full day of television sports. We have the Alabama Ole Miss game starting at 11.30.
from Oxford, Mississippi. And dare we suggest that with the Auburn-Arkansas game at five, you'll be able to flip over and catch the sixth game of the World Series here on TV 12 if a sixth game is necessary, kind of triple play for you. And speaking of the World Series, the operative word tonight is cold. Temperatures will drop into the 30s tonight in Cleveland for game three if they play the game. A cold rain began falling uh, after about three hours for game time. The field's been covered, batting practice canceled, and the forecast for tomorrow and Thursday is no better. Cold and possible snow flurry. It's a long way from the norm in Cleveland this time of the year. High is around 60, lows around 42. Charles Nagy will get the call for the Indians. Al Leiter for the warm climate Marlins. Leiter says baseballs feel like cue balls in this kind of weather, but he's been there before. Uh, up until uh, New Jersey when I used to play in 30-degree weather in March and April in high school. That's the last time I can remember. Oh, we we had, I, as a matter of fact, I pitched that game in Wrigley when it was the coldest game in the history of Wrigley Field, and I think we won, whatever, I gave up a couple rounds, and so I'm not going to... No big deal. No, no. Game three of the series starting here in about uh, 45 minutes, weather permitting. Steve Fisher, the recently fired basketball coach at Michigan, has reportedly been offered the job at the University of South Alabama. A player and a member of the search committee, Jason Hamm, says Fisher has been given until tomorrow to decide if he wants the job. Be a good, no. good move for him. I thought it wouldn't be a hard basketball. decision to make either. No, no. One thing I did want to uh, talk to you about, too, the, uh, talk about the cold temperatures for the, for the game tonight. You know, the Indians really aren't used to that either. It's no, been, no. you know, 90 degrees most of the places where they've been playing, too. So Yeah, but everybody thinks it's coming out of Florida, you know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Thanks, though. Rich will have the uh, game forecast for us. There's more to come in 6 o'clock report. Up next, has hatred found a home on the information superhighway? One group hopes to put an end to high-tech racism. It's being called the dark side of the Internet. Sites like the one you're about to see with themes of hate and extremism are increasing in numbers on the World Wide Web, according to the Anti-Defamation League. Today, the group announced plans to counter so-called high-tech hate messages. To set standards within the framework of the First Amendment that will give assurance to parents, educators, and communities that there is no tolerance for hate online. The League is trying to develop software to work as a filter between online users and hate groups and has support from America Online. AOL says it will attempt to weed out sites that violate the company's standards. In health news, there may be renewed hope for patients suffering from Alzheimer's disease. A new study from the Journal of the American Medical Association says a plant extract called Ginkgo biloba may save lives and even improve thinking in patients with dementia. So encouraged, the researchers caution these results are still preliminary. It's still unknown whether or not ginkgo can actually prevent the onset of Alzheimer's. Dementia, and you need to have, uh, you need to be lucky uh, to have this kind of improvement. Stabilization, perhaps, yes, but we have to be extremely prudent on that. Ginkgo biloba is sold as a nutritional supplement, but researchers say they can't comment yet about the effectiveness of those over-the-counter extracts. They say the ginkgo extract used in the study was a pure compound. Friends and family members are attending funeral services in Atlanta for the CEO of Coca-Cola, who died Saturday at the age of 65. Roboto Guzletta was diagnosed with lung cancer last month. Guzletta was born in Cuba and started working for Coke in the early 1950s. In 81, he took over as chairman and CEO of the company. Since then, Coca-Cola has grown from a $5 billion company to almost $150 billion. Some of the changes he made while at the helm of the company, introducing Diet Coke and the ill-fated New Coke. Well, you don't see anything about New Coke anymore, do you? Kind of went away, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, you know what's I, coming I in? I think many people like it. Well, yeah, it wasn't real popular. Rain, and I'm tickled to death, I, I know. can't wait until you tell us You had a it. big smile on your face I, when you, when I you heard about it. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll show you the radar. The radar says it all. So we'll keep you in suspense for a couple of minutes, but come on back, will you? Now, the WSFA Storm Team's Rich Thomas. I don't want to alarm you, but there's something strange we've been tracking on the radar the last few hours. Rain. People have been coming into the Storm Center all afternoon and saying, yep, that's rain, all right. In fact, we've had some heavy thunderstorms. Show it to you in just a second. Now, first to look at Tower Cam, and we have... 
uh, what is like a warm evening, 73 degrees now, with partly cloudy skies, calm wind, 62% on the relative humidity, and a dew point at 59. The barometer is steady, 30.01 inches, and uh, no rain so far in Montgomery. High temperature came in at 79. Nice warm day. That's too above normal. We started off at a cool 44 this morning. Record high on the state of 88 in 1963, and the record low, uh, a bone-chilling 30 back on the state in 1989. Yeah, a few hours ago, I had a report from Tuscaloosa County around Foster's, three-quarter inch hail from some thunderstorms there, which have been moving eastward very slowly. This big area of showers and thunderstorms will be traversing across central and south Alabama as the evening goes on. In fact, it's been, you know, kind of a slow movement. Storms have been moving off to the east at about, uh, about 15 miles per hour. We had uh, these hail reports from Tuscaloosa County, but you can see coming into Perry County now, pretty good sell. We're going to have to watch this one carefully. And it looks like all of us are going to at least have a good chance of getting wet later on tonight. I look at Super Doppler 12 right now. And let me show you the lead thunderstorms. This, this one is losing its intensity. This one near Miller's Ferry, moving on to the east at about 15. But still a good line of storms coming through. Well, right into the northwest part of Perry County and heading on to the east. So keep your fingers crossed. It looks like all of us are going to get some rain tonight. I look at the satellite view and you can see the big area of uh, clouds associated with this strong cold front, which is cutting across the region tonight, and it's going to deliver the latest shot of cold Canadian air, but a quick shot at that, because we are going to be cold and then warming up again, as you'll see in the next uh, couple of minutes here. First, a look at the map. This is the low-pressure area. There actually are two fronts, and they're going to catch up to each other tomorrow morning down in South Alabama, combine as one, and move farther south into uh, uh, Florida, it looks like. Then another storm system quickly develops out to the west. This one looks even wetter. Maybe some showers in here again on Friday, and a good chance of showers and thunderstorms as this system moves in on Saturday. And then it goes all the way down to the Gulf Coast, and a cool shot of air comes in again for Sunday. So a lot of changes are going to happen over the next few days. Your winds tonight out of the west at about 6 to 12 miles per hour. They'll be turning northerly and gusty behind the latest cold front, 12 to 22 miles per hour tomorrow, and 8 to 14 miles per hour for tomorrow night. Now, let's take a look at the temperatures, and they're wild. We start off, you know, we're relatively mild tonight, then much colder tomorrow night, and then a big warm-up as the next storm system approaches, perhaps upper 70s again by Saturday. And then at the very edge here, you can see the beginnings of a huge cool-off again by late on Sunday. So be, be flexible, be ready for some weather changes. Look at the lows tonight in the Great Lakes 20s and 30s. And as Phil mentioned, they're trying to play baseball in Cleveland, Ohio tonight. There's been some scattered showers, which might turn to snow flurries later on tonight. I think that would be primarily after the game. Most of the rain is over with right now, but I've asked the computer to show you the current conditions at Cleveland. 47 degrees. Do the wind chill is 32 uh, at the airport, but the winds are stronger near, um, near the field, near Jacobs Field. West winds are 25 to 35 miles per hour, so the wind chill is actually in the 20s. Can you imagine playing baseball? Well, can you imagine watching baseball? in weather like that. You can watch it on Channel 12 and be nice and warm in your house as you hear the rain fall outside, hopefully, tonight. Temperatures across the state now already down to 52 in Huntsville, so the cooler air is coming in. Look at the difference, though. 79 now in the Dothan area. Here's your forecast for the rest of tonight. Showers likely, chances some thunderstorms. There's been a few in the state this evening. We're watching them for you. 53 is the overnight low. Tomorrow could be a morning shower, especially in the southern half of the state. Clearing, breezy, and cooler. 67 for the afternoon high, and that's pr primarily midday temperature. And then clear skies cold tomorrow night, down to about 41. Here's the outlook for Thursday. So far, sunny. Looks like a good day Thursday with a high around 71. And then more chances ahead Friday. Could be some rain. And uh, then Saturday, showers and thunderstorms and a mild, almost summer-like day before things cool off on Sunday. Wow. That's a lot of weather changes in five days. Very respect to you. You know, I've played a little baseball. I can't imagine what it would be like to hit a 90 mile an hour fastball when it's 35, 40 degrees. Can you imagine the ball hitting you at that temperature? Gosh, that no. Sting. Or no. sitting in the stands watching. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Right. We'll be right back with first tonight's data bank and stock report. Remember to get connected to the power of MSNBC. Get on our homepage, www.wsfa.com.
The Stock Market Report is brought to you by J.C. Bradford & Company. Coming up tonight after the game, can vaccinating a chicken stop people from getting sick? Tonight, help reporter Ashley Anderson takes a look at new research into the dangerous salmonella bacteria and the ways you and I can prevent being exposed to it. Plus, Rich returns with your updated forecast and see what creature will feature on tonight's late report. That's all coming up after the game. And finally, our one more thing comes to you tonight from Maxwell Air Force Base. It's the Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce Open Golf Tournament. Now, the tournament is a chance for chamber members to network and get to know one another a little bit better. Chairman Tom Somerville says the chamber tries to get its members to do business with one another. In addition to the good competition, however, the members were treated to a gourmet lunch just before tea time. If you're interested in learning how you can get your business registered with the Chamber of Commerce, you can give them a call, 834-5200. It's going to wrap up tonight's 6 o'clock report. Remember, we'll be back here with the late report after tonight's game. We'll see you then.